Virgos, welcome to your singles read. This is for the first half of October. Call it the 1st to the 15th, using the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot. I know it's a little dark, ah, working on it, but I think you can see this deck um, pretty good. I'll just shuffle, uh, put a little energy on. I'm already shuffled, but just so you can see um, the queen here. But this reading is always positive. It's different than the uh, heart spread that I do, which is also up and always on Wednesdays is Leo Virgo Day, whether it's a heart spread or the singles. Uh, do check out the Soul Family read I do, a little reading every day, a daily. It's for whoever resonates. See if that uh, resonates with you. You want to be part of the Soul Family, which I hope so. <laughs> uh, but here I say it's always positive because the questions are so important in tarot. And we're simply asking spirit here today. I say spirit, source, God. Um, this is not an uncomfortable spirit. Even the source is kind of how I think about it. <laughs> but when I say it, I won't say spirit, you know. I want to make it clear maybe that it's something real. It's not just a concept, you know. But, so we're just asking, you know, who's the right one? Who's the soulmate that we need to be with? So this is not going to be, be ever the next ex-problem, ex-wife, ex-husband. So it's positive by disposition. Of the reading okay so keep that in mind as a read uh, there's triggery card you know if you see a three of swords not, nobody's breaking up with you because likely this person you haven't met yet is how i conceive of it a lot of people often tell me it does describe somebody in their lives um i think if it does it's probably somebody maybe that uh hasn't uh, been a lover or something and uh, comes in kind of new um so we're clearing the runway, bringing down your soulmate. I'm going to try to describe them. But we'll look for astrological position, sun, moon, rising, and Venus, just like for the reading. Do like, share, subscribe. I really need it. Um, want to get to 1,000, we can start doing these live, which I think will be interesting. <laughs> I had to scratch one yesterday because of the noise. So you need to get myself into a better position uh, while I'm inside here because um, you'll be, be going great and then you have five minutes of somebody turns on an engine next door <laughs> It's like kind of ruined. So that shouldn't be a problem here. We're going to look at the emotional first nature uh, death card. So again uh, Keep in mind it's a highly intuitive reading. It's a little different and not going to mean what they might normally mean uh, five of swords. This is in their emotional nature. We're going to pull eight cards Emotional, intellectual, two cards, two cards for their sexual love nature, and two cards for what I call lifestyle core values, and I call that the four pillars of a relationship. Emotional connection, intellectual connection, sexual and love connection, and your lifestyle and core values, especially core values. God, that's like everything else you can compromise, right? But core values, no. So uh, I believe it's wrong to take a life. I think it's okay to take a life. Core values, you know, core values can be... I, I can't live with someone that eats meat, you know, um, uh, something like this. Uh, core values, I, I want children. I don't want children. Core value, hard to get out of that one, right? Um, lifestyle, I think, is the one that gives the most play. But let's see what we're dealing with here. This is the intellectual position, Knight of Cups. I like this here. Um, the fact that it's a knight is good. And wow, and uh, emotional energy, Nine of Cups. So here I see often the son of the person in the intellectual position. Uh, in the emotional position, I'll see the moon. And I think we're dealing with Scorpio moon. I'm not sure on the... Uh, it feels more like a Cancer sun. I really feel cancer because of the Nine of Cups. But I don't think it's a moon in, in a Scorpio. I think it's a Scorpio moon. But I don't think it's a sun also in Scorpio. So let me go and look at the sexual nature here and think about that. I usually get a hit on the sun. Scorpio moon's coming up strong. And that's already saying a lot, especially with this Five of Swords. Um, Knight of Pentacles. I like this in the sexual position. Now we got some maybe earth energy coming in. Uh, you, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but the Knight of Pentacles, I'll have to reverse them, is looking at the Knight of Cups. That's significant right here. If you just look at how that makes you feel, there's something going on with this person. Um, 
mutual reception. Their son, I'm not clear yet, oh, it's a water son, is in some kind of mutual reception. Uh, likely with this Knight of Pentacles, it's going to be their uh, Venus energy. Um, it could imply, too, uh, a good aspect, the sun being in their natal chart, being sextile um, to uh, their Venus energy. Uh, Venus here implies it's going to be uh, Earth Venus, uh, water sun, definitely a Scorpio moon. Um, so now we're bringing in some balance. The Nine of Cups in the lower position, sort of like the unconscious mind I read. This is the intellect and the Knight of Cups in the conscious. They have a good alignment with their unconscious and conscious mind. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm really being drawn to the Scorpio sun, which would make it a Scorpio sun and moon. Um, but if not, you know, um, in, with the Nine of Cups, I think they're emotionally very balanced. Um, they're going to be a listener. Um, and I think that's also with the Knight of Cups looking at the Knight of Pentacles, their Venus. Um, their, um, their intellect is emotional. Their real intellectual power is emotional intelligence. So, and this would kind of be like a thing where they're sort of born with this. And it, it develops, you know, as you're younger, right? You go out in the world, you begin to realize, you just maybe don't even realize, you really don't know how other people are. You just uh, feel things and you take actions based upon the way you feel. Um, and that's what seems to work out with you. With this Nine of Cups, it show like they, this is a person like Gibbs on NCIS, they always can trust their gut. And, you know, I think they always will. Um, and with the Death card and the Five of Swords in the emotional position, that's also where I read childhood a lot. I try to pick up on stories. Um, and, you know, if you look at this Five of Swords, um, this person lost uh, probably a father in their life, possibly like a grandfather who was like a father or simply a father figure. Um, it, if, it could be a feminine figure, but I get the feeling of this masculine. The, they lost the masculine when they were young. You know, this is, could be a situation they were six, seven, and dad dies of a heart attack something like this so uh, that's kind of specific I mean this loss could also be to divorce I mean it might not be that dramatic um, and um, but you see with the death card here and the moon and Scorpio it, it no, no matter how it went down you know the natal chart too people don't understand what it really reflects is how we feel about our experience it doesn't exactly reflect what actually happened Vedic astrologers will argue to the death on that but Western's more psychological. I think it shows what we made of the childhood. And so even if there was a divorce, it might have been a situation where the father left and didn't take a lot of responsibility. I understand that it happened to me um, in their life. So it left this kind of hole uh, with them. So it would feel it might as well have been a death, you know. And sometimes you could say, you know, maybe it's better to have a death because then you can tell yourself, well, they didn't actually abandon me. You know, so there's like this abandonment stuff that they dealt with at a very early age. Um, and I get the feeling, too, with the Five of Swords in this emotional position, um, they're very protective of themselves emotionally. So as a Scorpio moon, this is a Scorpio moon trait, but they can be extra, extra. Um, they, it'd be interesting what they reveal to you. Uh, maybe even this story doesn't come right away, even though they know you're a soulmate. This is the Scorpio moon that's very, particularly the way they're set up with possibly a Scorpio sun too. And this Venus in good aspect, I'm guessing the Mars, I'm waiting to pull it. But um, it's setting up um, to be somebody, uh, it's very Scorpionic, and they're going to protect themselves with their... Uh, thoughts in their communication and thoughts are like they're going to be that type of person that picks up the vibes like if this person says grabs your arm at any point in life and says we got to go right now just go don't say just go just this person uh, I mean that's like psychic but they can read a f out of people like razor sharp these swords razor sharp and it's a little defensive you know 
um, you may find it. There's a, but they're, you know, they're very good at it. They're very emotional and very, they, they can converse in it, but you know, they're very good at like, uh, you could talk to them forever and they're never going to let you into these places that they protect with swords uh, deep inside themselves, you know. Um, and it's not good or bad. It's just a Scorpio moon. I uh, just think, you know, it could be a Scorpio moon at zero degrees. Uh, man, anything at zero degrees, it just absolutely seems to roll out the basic interpretation of that thing. So whereas oftentimes, you, you know, you have your Scorpio moon at 27 degrees, and then you read what does a Scorpio moon uh, mean, and it doesn't, you know, it's, some of it's there, some of it's not. But I almost guarantee you, if your Scorpio moon or any planet is at a zero degree, and you read these uh, competent, basically competent interpretations, um, they're going to be bang on. You're going to be like, whoa, whoa, this is exactly describing me. And that's the power of a zero degree. Um, let's see here with the Hierophant. Now, this is in their sexual energy under the Knight of Pentacles. Wow. So, with the sexual energy being the Knight of Pentacles, and we're looking at a Cancer figure here. Um, I don't know if it's going to be Gemini, their Venus. They're going to have a Virgo Venus. And, um, you know, Virgo and Cancer go together very well. And it brings about like a really caring energy, you know. Um, and also, I'm going to tell you what this person, they may be a nurse, this person, man or woman, or caretaker like that. And they're the classic thing about this person. They take care of everyone else, but they don't take care of themselves. And they just, other than they really guard their IC, their deepest, most vulnerable self, you're not going to get near that. Uh, not easy, not quick, not even with sex, honestly. And, you know, with having the uh, emperor here, you know, they could have an eighth house uh, Mars comes to mind. Um, so if you're looking at their natal chart, look at that. And even at that uh, Mars, um, they may have a Leo Mars. I'm getting with the Emperor. If they're a Cancer personality, um, and put that in the eighth house, so it it could bring in that Scorpionic energy. And with with it being in the eighth house, and with it being a Fire Mars. Um, it would be uh, really intense sexuality uh, with the Virgo Venus. I mean, they want to please. So it's not your, uh, uh, the Leo Mars has a, the biggest criticism, selfish and, you know, uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Um, but also the Leo Mars could be bad as an astrologer talking to women mostly. Leo Mars has seemed to do pretty good. Um, so, and, and to be, it's just a sexual energy. It's kind of a dominant energy. You really see here with this emperor, it's kind of haughty, you know. Um, so it's quite a combination. It brings to mind, too, this person probably wouldn't be real overtly sexual. They're not going to be sending you dick pics. Thank <laughs> God, right? And they're not going to be, hey, you know, I want to do this and that, you know. But when the door closes, holy shit, are they going to bring it? You know, and kind of uh, going to be a dominant energy. I'm not talking shades of gray, just dominant. Just they're going to take you, whether they're a woman or a man, they're going to take you. Okay. Now, we're looking at their lifestyle core values. Seven of Wands. Defense, uh, seven of Wands is defense of the castle. Think of that there very strongly. Nine of Swords. Now, look at this Nine of Swords. I believe there's enough light. Um... You see that it's all in the mind, all in the mind. This energy of turmoil, being in a nightmare. Um, I often say it goes back to the intellectual. <coughs> and look how they have the nine of cups here in the unconscious, and then they have the nine of swords and what they do. So I think that they, this energy that they have mastered with the nine of cups and its uh, intellectual ability. Um, to make sense of things for them um, is about this Nine of Swords energy, probably from their loss in childhood. It's just going to go right back to that. I know it's cliche, but that's how it goes. You know, and, and very few people have an idyllic childhood. And I found, I mean, it's like, it's actually rare. 
uh, it's kind of what we do with it and it's all karmic you know um, there I don't read the bottom of the deck in this reading or typically clarify so seven of wands and the nine of swords well I'll tell you this terms of lifestyle they like to control their home and this person doesn't like large parties They're, they don't like they wouldn't like uh, people they wouldn't like Seinfeld where you know uh, you've got Kramer just popping in the door and it seems adorable no they would be like boundaries uh, dude and they'd be locking that door and they might go to the door and say I'm sorry Kramer I'm kind of busy right now get with me later okay so they're not digging to open a house there um, they want to control their environment you know it's like part of the way they control themselves and they stay emotionally balanced because they're very emotional I mean, someone like this could be too emotional and just lost in emotions, you know, um, is this defense they put up. Uh, and I, I'm not really sure what they do at work, um, but I think that they could be in some kind of sales or something like this where they sort of have to present themselves. I get the feeling it's a business and they're a worker. They've been doing it a while. And if you talk to them, they might tell you, but you kind of prod them. They're gonna, if they put on a suit, it's like they normally don't wear a suit and they just feel like they're putting on like a mask. You know, this this is past life stuff. Yeah, they 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 don't like like uniforms and they may consider something a uniform that we might consider like if you're a cop, you wear a uniform, maybe a nurse, you wear a uniform, you know, but we wouldn't really consider most of us, yeah, putting on a suit and tie to go to work, it's not really wearing a uniform. To them, it's like wearing a uniform is something negative about that in the past like they regretted getting in the uniform probably for the military you know having gotten screwed uh, so past life story I, I, who knows if that'll come up you know uh, with all the scorpionic eighth house energy here maybe eighth house mars you know they may well be into astrology and arrow and e esoteric uh, things past lives and all of that um, shadow work this person knows shadow work they've done the shadow work probably like as a child it probably just came like natural to them to you know to look at the darkness and go why is this making me so whatever and to deal with it you know because they didn't get into this king uh, knight of cups uh, nine of cups energy in their intellect you know it's someone that is their their uh, strength superpower is emotional intelligence emotional intelligence you know uh, but they're intelligent you know and that's listening and receptive there's a feminine aspect to it you know so this is someone that could sit back mm -hmm, really ask a few pointed questions and after you're finished talking i mean they understand what you said they understand shit you didn't say the nuances of what you said they understand why you said it they understand maybe how it relates to you and they pop in their mind is popping with insights from your body language from the way you said things not only what you said the pace of how you said it and all kinds of things are popping off for them and this is uh how they kind of understand approach the world it's like through a filter of emotions you know um and so they, if you're with them on a date or something you would see them back you know da, 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 and then boom an assessment that comes and it's probably a very good assessment quick, concise, and like pointed, as if saying like, so what I hear you saying is blah, 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 blah. They might not say what I hear you saying, uh, but it, they'd be like, wow, it must have been tough to blah, 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 and blah, but they'll hit every point that you made, and you'll get the feeling from being around them, talking to them, um, this is that cancer energy, it's so strong, I'm feeling not the Scorpio so much uh, with their son. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, they're, they're caring about you, you know, with their mind, with their words. Uh, and so that's what they'll mo mostly focus on. There'll be a lot coming out of them. I think they could have translated this into being a therapist of some kind. But like I said, even if they do go to work, it's like they might have the feeling like it's not really what they love to do. Uh, they're very, if they, in terms of work, they might tell you uh, stories about kind of turf wars or something like they may be a little bit more that Leo Mars maybe comes out at work, you know, um, and 
they um, are they're not above like defending themselves at work, righteous defense. Uh, someone who makes a lot of notes and keeps a lot of notes and documents things so that if the shit goes down, I mean, it's the Scorpio. Say, you know, after years and years, the boss screws them for no reason. This person's going to pull out an extensive file of exact dates and documents, you know, um, you know, um, efficiency reports from the past, everything, and, you know, maybe blow somebody's mind, something like that. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of, they, they feel like they need protection. I don't think they're comfortable at work ever or even kind of with people. There's just always got to be this kind of uh, protection with them. Again, it's your soulmate. It's not going to be a problem for you, but don't be surprised. They're a little slow to let you in, and, um, you know, you won't, but, I mean, this is the kind of person Scorpio who never screw them over. They never forget anything. Like, they will marry the one in 25 years. They will throw shit back at you after 25 years, and remember the things that you said that date, the time was it sunny outside, and you're like, what? And they ain't kidding. So um, they're most likely never going to forget an anniversary. <laughs> so I think that gives us a lot to go on, Virgos. And let me know what you think. Do like, share, subscribe. Appreciate it. Need the help. Um, and, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend. And probably you won't meet this person maybe today, maybe this week first half of October, when you do, get back to me, make a comment, um, uh, let me know, because it's a predictive read, you know, uh, this should be the person you're with now, for that, look at the heart spread, thank you guys.